You have to be using aluminum foil. That can't be wire. What is going? How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody's doing good. I'm feeling bright. Apparently I took this shirt from the hazard cone. Caution. Beep, 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 beep. It's the weird truck with the broken backup horn. Beep. What is going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review a very, very, very long time ago. I'm not quite sure as to why I never did the review for this. This is one of those devices that just kind of sit at the bottom of the box. And I have a lot of those. Like for instance, I have the Micro RDTA Jammy. I've got the Elite Gen 2. The, oh my God, the Rapt. There's just so much that I have that I just never got around to. But the problem is the longer that I I wait for it what ends up happening is that becomes a throwback video because i don't have any other way to put that up sure i could put it up but then someone's gonna be like dude that shit's 48 years old no one even vapes anymore so what i have to do is review the cigarettes that's that's the next venue i have to go down because apparently no one likes when i do reviews on older products but there is that small niche and that small niche loves when i do throwbacks so Today we're going to be doing a throwback. We're going to be doing it on the Asylum Mods 28 millimeter RDA. I'm not sure if that's three years old, six months, or two years old. This is not to be confused with the 25 millimeter. This might be version one or version two. I'm not even sure if they made different versions. One of the big problems I have with Asylum Mods is even though they just came out with that new Sherman, what's happening is they're using the same post configuration on every single thing you you can't keep doing that you know you don't come out with a pair of brand new shoes that look like shoes from 55 years ago especially in the vape realm you have to change things add another post change the airflow do something different it doesn't matter what it is and a drip tip that looks like a toenail i mean there are so many things that you can do to change but i have to retroactively look at this and again don't expect a rating off of this because all throwback videos, if you haven't seen them, I have probably about two other ones. I was going to say like 50. Either way, at the end of the video, I'll have a little block that'll give you all the other throwback videos or I'll post the link right there. That's the whole playlist of all the different throwbacks. Basically, if something's like six months to a year old, it's a throwback video, roughly, give or take. Don't go looking through all my shit now. Be like... Jay, every video you have is from devices six months ago. They're all throwbacks. You know what? You're a throwback. Let's flip it. The Asylum Mods Sherman RDA, not to be confused with the original Sherman RTA, which I do have here, which I believe is version two. And I'm gonna show you a couple little things about it. Not really much on the outside of the tube, open that up. There's the dripper on the bottom. You're gonna have a little peripheral bag, which is gonna have some extra accessories in it and then an extra drip tip. One thing that I love with the Silo Mods and all of their Sherman series, I love the drip tips. I think they're super badass. It's 810 situation, but it's flat. What that does is that allows you to really give nice coverage on the top, making the drip tip appear bigger than what it is. Sort of like if a woman puts tissues in her bra or a guy puts socks in his pants or underwear or anywhere really makes okay inside the peripheral bag you're going to get an extra clamp some o-rings and some extra screws nothing really crazy here there is no squonk pen i'm not quite sure if asylum mods released any kind of additional accessories you could buy for the original sherman rda or their latest rda which is the 25 millimeter rendition but this doesn't come with it and again rightfully so because this rda is quite old well i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's old it's just not as new as other drippers got that mickey mouse jammy with some needles and scissors and it looks like uh maybe a a wind up jammy on his back crown down here airflow situation here very 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 easy to adjust and keep in mind this has not been used so this is straight out of the box that fluidity on the top you're gonna have an 810 drip tip which allows you to 
replace that Ultim jammy with the black one. To me, the black one just looks that much better. I feel the Ultim is a little out of place because it doesn't really match the rest of the dripper. This is just like the Kennedy, something that I love so much is when you put a build in it, you drip it up, you paint the coils, you just pop this on, you don't have to worry about it lining up any special kind of way. Same type of situation with this. I don't see any kind of flaws on the walls. That's looking quite clean in there. That's impressive. Now this is the deck of the 28 millimeter RDA. What I wanna show you is the Sherman RTA. That is the Sherman RTA. And that is the Sherman RDA. So what they did obviously change is the threading, but they're almost identical. Post situation, airflow situation, it's just across the board. All they did was take this, remove the threading, and now you have an RDA. I think one of the biggest problems we have with utilizing old situations as a new situation, it doesn't really go very well, especially when you continually do it. The posts have a beveled situation for the clamps, meaning you can loosen this up a little bit, and then when you go to put wire in here, it's automatically gonna grab and raise that up a little bit. These are not spring-loaded, massively large flathead screws. Airflow is raised up. I feel that this could have been that much better if they would have made this more flush, because this puts us in a predicament, sort of like on the SIG Moonshot, or there was another RDA that was just like this as well, where you had to build really, really awkwardly high set because of the way that the airflow is. Now, that's not necessarily a problem with this dripper because it's so tall, but still they should have lowered that down a little bit. The bright side of it being up like that is it's gonna be very difficult for you to over drip on this just because you have this humongous wall and well on the side and your airflow is raised up. So your coils are gonna sit like this. Dual 26 core with 34 on the outside. Let's put it in. Sometimes I think that I'm unstoppable. Yeah. Ready to go, man. Lock and load. That's right. I swear to God that I could drop you, bro. Yeah. I got a shot and I ain't stopping, no. That's how I know that I'm unstoppable. Addicted to the crime, man. That's right. So I refuse to waste time, man. Yeah. One day it all will be fine, man. Let's go. Gotta commit to the crime. You know we're back with the Guinness setting records. Once again, that is the Sherman 28 millimeter RDA. Let's bring it on the top. Are we still doing the mannequin challenge or is that done? I think that's old, right? I was, I'm trying to participate. Back on the top of the Sherman 28 millimeter RDA sitting on top of this J. Hayes jammy. This is the Berserker. Uh, if you haven't seen the review for that, I'll go ahead and I'll post the link right there in the corner. Here we go. This is sitting at somewhere that I wouldn't know. Probably tested that before we because the device that I have it on doesn't really have much of a tester, so... Actually, I might use this instead, because that looks a little bit better. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. Uh, and that is giving us... This sounds good. Alright, guys, so we are back on the top of the Sherman RDA 28mm throwback device sitting on top of the Rebel Dual 2700. Let me show you some of the vapor production. 0 0.30 on the button. Right there, you'll see it right there on the top. You know what I really have to do? I have to change the settings of all my DNAs because people think I'm lying about the resistance. Like, oh, there's no way your build can do that. That's not possible that it's that low. Oh, well that should be a lot higher than that. You have to be using aluminum foil. That can't be wire. This, 
There's no way that's possible. Are you sure that's really what you built? Is that the right gauge? It looks like either I have Tourette's or Parkinson. <laughs> and I got some really Southern British, if you will, accent. There's no way that that wire is correct. Are you sure that your resistances are reading correctly on your mod? <laughs> that's the voice that I read it in. I don't know why you sound like that, but that's what I get. <laughs> are you sure that's really a DNA 75C box mod? Where did you get that? Is that made out of something else? Meteorite, polyrhythm of the Marite. Just shut off. Like, just, just go somewhere else. You know, like, just shut up. Oh, is that really Campbell that you use? There's no way I pull that up on Steam Engine. And you can't have the proper build. That's not right. It should be one more wrap. Little did you know that my kidney puncher situation is all fucking jacked up, so I'm thinking I'm using Canthal when in reality I'm using like straight up steel. There's not even, it's not even stainless. It's, they took out the stain, kept the less, and the steel. So it's steelless. There's no way you're getting that vapor production. There must be a fog machine behind you. Uh, so this is the situation. First off, the problem I have with all of Asylum Mods products is they're using a lot of the same situation. That dual post scenario with the flathead screws and the beveled clamps. Listen, that was great two years ago. In their defense, this isn't a brand new device that I'm doing a review on or a throwback. But I did do it on the Sherman 25, and that's a newer RTA using the same situation. They're going to get a lot of flat. A lot of people are giving them shit for still making the same style of post that they've made two years ago. There's no way that that's a two-post stripper, even though I see two posts. There must be five. They have to let that go and move forward. The amount of flavor that I'm getting off of this thing is absurd. Like, it's ridiculous. Okay, so let's go over some of the pros and cons. First off, the cons. There's one major con, and that's because every other device, even prior to this, still uses that same situation. Bottom airflow. Now, that is a pro to a lot of people because you get a lot of flavor. The only problem I have is that I'm so spoiled with drippers that don't leak. I can douse the shit. And anybody out there saying that, oh, you could douse this, yes, you can. You can pour all directly down the center, and then you get capillary action up through your wicks onto your coils. That is a thing. I'm not making that a capillary action. That, that's really a thing. I promise you that that's real. The only problem you may run into is with the kippa capillary kippa The only problem you have with capillary action is you're really relying on the cotton itself to wick properly to the coils. What I like is when I could see the coils and as I'm dripping through the center, it kind of hits those coils. It's not really just the capillary action. Again, listen, I know I'm gonna get shit for this, but this is why I love the 502. It's not because it's great flavor. It's not because whatever the fuck. The reason why I love the 502 is I could take my 502, I could take whatever I'm using, right? Watch, and just go like this, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I get the argument, you should be experienced, I'm not disagreeing with that. I just wanna be careless and not give a shit because it's not leaking. Watch when I hit the fire button, nothing's on there. See that? No jammy. No jammy. The height of this is really tall. I think the reason why they made it so tall is to counter because the way that their airflow is you have to set that coil a lot higher, thus, making the dripper higher so the coils aren't literally on top of your lip and burning your tongue. Not necessarily a bad thing. On a bigger mod, it doesn't look bad at all. This thing does look nice. I won't deny that. The machining is superb. Everything about this across the board is just really, really nice. It's not a dripper that I would use just because of the size of it. I more prefer a much smaller profile or lower profile and kind of an 810 situation that is really small, if that makes sense. Meaning like, how could I explain it? Let's take the Otis 25. Perfect example, right? It's a smaller 810, meaning it doesn't need to be so wide. I, I don't know how else to explain that. 
If you don't understand what I'm saying, then I guess it doesn't matter. As far as a recommendation is concerned, listen, it's still at a chunky price point from what it was a couple years back when it was released, or a year ago, however long it was. Still kind of the same price point. I think it went down about 20 bucks. This might have been a bean when it first came out. Either way, where it's at right now, I would recommend it if you like 20 millimeter RDAs, because there's really not that many, and kind of a taller set. I feel like this is for a big burly man. Something like a lumberjack or something, or somebody that worked on the Panama Canal. That kind of guy, just big, buffed, ripped. Let me get my dripper. There's no way that's a real dripper. <laughs> yeah, either way, this is a really, really solid dripper. I really like how it looks on top of a black mod. Just really nice fluidity going on there. There still are a lot of sites out there that are still carrying this, even though it's older. I think there just wasn't a lot of speed or hype built up around this, which is why they're still in stock at a lot of places. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jay, so. There's no way you're keeping it real.